We've probably all been there. You find a great 3D model online, and when you import it into Blender, you realize that it didn't come with any textures, or the ones it came with were terrible, or the model looked really low poly, or some other problem. I'm going to share with you three tips that should help you with some of the things that you might encounter when using cheap or free models. My first example is this building that I used in my Inception World Bench video. I'll put a download link to that building down in the description so you can follow along. This building doesn't come with any textures, so I'll give you a quick rundown on how I added different materials to the building. With this particular building, and in fact many models you may find online, when you import it, it might be way too big or way too small. In this case, it's so big you can't even see it unless you zoom out or change the camera clipping distance. But this is easily fixed by scaling it down. When you import an object, it's selected automatically. So all you have to do is press the S key on your keyboard and move the mouse cursor towards the object origin point to scale it down. There are a few things you'll need to do before adding materials to the model. Firstly, you'll need to UV unwrap the model. To do this, select the model and enter edit mode by pressing the tab key on your keyboard. Now press A to select all the vertices, then press U to open the UV unwrapping menu. Then select Smart UV Project. Depending on the complexity of the model, this process might take a while. This will give us basic UVs to work with, but some models or parts of models may need selected and unwrapped individually. Now that the model is UV unwrapped, we can start applying materials to it. Switch into the Material Preview view by pressing Z and selecting Material Preview. Then change the default timeline window into the shader editor by clicking on this menu here. This model already has a material applied to it called Default OBJ. I'm just going to use that as a starting point because it already has the principled shader that I was otherwise going to use. I'm starting with a large stone block material from textures.com. I'll put a link in the description. Here, I'm simply dragging the albedo image texture file from a file browser off screen and placing it into the shader editor. Before continuing, I'm going to take this opportunity to rename the material. The albedo texture then gets connected to the base color input of the principled shader. Here, I'm adding the normal, height, and roughness maps. Connecting these is a fairly simple process. Connect the roughness map to the roughness input, and connect the normal map to the normal input of the principled shader. In order for these textures to be utilized properly, they must be changed from sRGB to non-color, and the normal map needs a normal map node between it and the principled shader. Now, UV unwrapping is only part of the story when it comes to texture mapping. The other part of the story is done here in the shader editor by adding a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. Connect the UV output of the texture coordinate node to the vector input of the mapping node, and connect the vector output of the mapping node into the vector inputs of all the image textures. Then you can use the mapping node to modify your texture mapping. In this case, I'm increasing the scale to reduce the size of the stone blocks, but it can also be used to adjust position and rotation. I want these bricks to be lighter in color, so here I'm placing an RGB curves node between the albedo texture and the principled shader. The brightness can then be increased by dragging the center of the curve towards the upper left corner. That's pretty good for the first material, but I want to start adding some detail by putting glass in the windows. Add a new material slot by clicking the plus button here. Now click the new material button and give it a name. I don't want this glass to actually be transparent though because there's no interior detail in the building. So I'm just going to make the base color black and make it glossy by reducing the roughness to zero. Most glass isn't perfectly smooth, especially old glass, like what might exist in a building like this. So I'm adding a bump node and connecting it to the normal input of the principled shader. A noise texture node is then connected to the height input of the bump node. Before you can fine tune the noise settings, you need to apply the material to a window. To do this, first press tab to go into edit mode. Then enable face selection by clicking here. Now, left click on the window plane. Holding Shift allows you to select a second face if desired. Then select your glass material and click Assign to assign it to the selected faces. 
To get a better idea of what it will actually look like, it might help to switch to rendered view by pressing Z and selecting rendered. The noise texture and bump node settings can now be tuned to your liking. Now it's just a matter of selecting all the glass on the model and assigning the glass material. This process will probably take a while, so be patient. The roofing material was applied in basically the same way as the stone block material. To recap, add a new material slot, click the new material button, and give it a name. Then select the faces, choose the material, and click assign. Here I'm using a metal roofing material, which unlike the stone block texture, also comes with a metallic map that simply gets connected to the metallic input of the principled shader. Don't forget to set this from sRGB to non-color data. Like the stone blocks, however, the roof tiles also need to be scaled and recolored. I applied several other materials as well, but the principles remain the same. Let's move on to a different kind of problem that you might run into. After giving the car a few simple materials, I right-clicked on it and tried setting the shading mode to smooth shading, to smooth out the sharp edge lines, but it seemed like nothing happened. The problem is that the edges are set to sharp. This is notated by the teal color of the edges in edit mode. The fix for this is straightforward, yet tedious. First, switch to your edge selection mode, then select your edge, right-click, and choose clear sharp. Be careful though, some of the edges are supposed to be sharp and should be left as such. This car model comes in multiple pieces, which is great if you're rigging it for realistic turning or suspension. But if you're doing really simple animation like me, or you just want to avoid having mirrors or tail lights being left behind, it can be useful to join some of the objects together. This can be achieved by selecting the objects you'd like to join and simply pressing Ctrl J. That wraps it up for this video. If you encounter a problem not discussed in this video, drop it down in the comments, and maybe I'll make a video on how to fix it. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, check out my other videos, and please consider subscribing.